Joining us now to discuss all of this, especially Egypt's role in the story, is Holly Lipman. Holly is the founder and CEO of Genesis 10 and a longtime participant in Middle East diplomatic affairs. And he's just returned from a meeting with Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. Holly, thank you for being with us. My pleasure. Holly, what did you talk about with the President al-Sisi? What were the main topics discussed? Well, one was the importance of all of us working together, moderate nations against extremism. And that means working with Egypt, Saudi Arabia, UAE, and Bahrain against Iran, also working with Israel. And I think that's really important, that coalition against Iran. Well, you were uh, in Egypt 40 years ago uh, as part of a delegation at the time of the Camp David Accords. But what brings you to Egypt again? Explain how it is that you have an audience with, with the president of Egypt. Well, we're presenting Sisi with the Congressional uh, Medal of Freedom. Uh, you need two-thirds of the, of the House and Senate to approve that. And 40 years later, there's been no war between Egypt and Israel. And Egypt is playing an extremely valuable role in keeping peace and security in that region. Sisi's got a lot on his hands in dealing with the Muslim Brotherhood, an extremist organization that wants to impose their way of life on everyone in Egypt. So he's an important ally of the United States and Israel, and we want to be supportive of his efforts. And, and what was your main takeaway for, from the meeting in terms of uh, relationships between Egypt and Israel, particularly as uh, the, the Trump administration seems to be ready to roll out its uh, peace plan after the Israeli elections? Well, one is how open he is, which is remarkable. You know, when you meet with a head of state or a CEO, often they give you a very short period of time, and they tend to delegate their answers. They'll say, uh, we'll get back to you. I'll have someone uh, give you the answers later. He was very direct. He said yes and no. And, you know, we all found that very refreshing. So one was, he said he's going to restore Jewish cemeteries in Egypt. He'll build synagogues if Egyptian Jews return. He's all about tolerance. They're building a major cathedral in Cairo. So I think that's, that's really important. And we talked about that, closer relations with Israel, which he's doing, especially in fighting ISIS in Sinai. So he represents tolerance. And I think that's really important. And that's where the epic battle is, tolerance versus extremism. There has uh, been some speculation uh, that a future peace plan may involve Egypt very heavily in the sense that perhaps uh, some territory from the Sinai Peninsula, which uh, Israel returned to Egypt for peace, may be carved out and, and given to Gaza as, as a potential three-state solution. Was that discussed? Briefly. Yes, we talked about that a little bit. And I think Egypt is really trying to go the extra mile to help bridge the gap, put pressure on the Palestinians to come to terms. So I think he's playing a really constructive role in the region. Would, would Egypt support it. that? Did he say that he would support uh, carving out some of the Sinai Peninsula for uh, a state for, for the Palestinians no, he along didn't with Gaza? No, he didn't say that explicitly, but he said Egypt will do everything possible to help create peace between Israel and the Palestinians. And he's playing a very important uh, behind-the-scenes role in making that happen. Well, what is everything, everything possible? What can you tell us about what he said? Well, he's very much trying to establish a stronger relationship with Israel, yet at the same time combat the Muslim Brotherhood and work with Israel in creating peace in the region. And if that involves, uh, as long as it involves peace, if there is a, a, a Palestine where it becomes Gaza and what we call the West Bank, He's on board. If Israel accepts it, the Palestinians accept it. He's trying to bring the two sides together. So he's playing a very important role in creating peace in the region. From what we know about the plan, and again, this is speculation, uh, there is the idea that there will be these uh, economic ties between Israel and uh, these other Arab nations and other ties focusing on the common uh, denominator, which is the common threat of Iran, and that that will de facto establish ties between Israel and some of these Arab countries without the explicit recognition of Israel uh, being a Jewish state from those countries that don't recognize it. But it will I'm be not, a de facto recognition. It may be more than a de facto recognition. By Israel working with these nations, uh, the, the moderate uh, Arab Sunni nations, they see that Israel is a good partner 
And I think, especially the young leaders in that area, they're really coming to terms with Israel. And I think they will come to terms with Israel as a Jewish nation. I think this is the goal, and I think that will be the end product of all this. Will there have to be a Palestinian state explicitly declared before these uh, economic partnerships start gaining traction? Not necessarily. What they're looking for is some meaningful work on behalf of the Palestinians. If they could get through that, I think we're going to move forward. Already Jordan and Egypt made peace with Israel. The next nations are going to be the UAE, Saudi Arabia, and Bahrain, and I think we're on the way. I'm very optimistic and positive about what's going on in the region. All right. Uh, we like that optimism, and uh, we want some uh, detailed updates. Thank you so <laughs> okay. much. You'll get those. Harley okay. Lippmann, thank you. Thank you.